different brands of panties. <laughs> I did it for years, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now uh, this was when Jory Zotelli came to Westport in 1969, which was a great coup for Westport to get a, a, such a big name as Jory Zotelli coming to Westport. And it, it, it went on slide with that type to get, uh, get them here. And gave them the man to be there. And these are their sex and skirts at the time. So, okay, come on. Now, this was a debate that went on in uh, church reform, 1975. And uh, in it, uh, Sean Scott tried to go on to make some comment. Sean was the chair. Uh, so Sean, as you all remember, Sean, now prayers in three years at the moment. And I feel very sad about it. And uh, that's uh, Basil Morgan, and he's a fellow Greedy. Now, yeah, Basil wiped the ground with the one at hand down the debate. Yeah. Okay, come on. Now, this is the procession I was, the procession Sunday. There's the hall, all the, the army out there walking, and the local defense force were up. And that's it. Okay, come on. Then the benediction was up at the clock, usually a blessing. And then we brought the next one from and showed it. The crowds that took the turn out then in 86. Um, right now, I'm going very fast, I know, but uh, it's very hard to get the wall inside. Uh, I don't want to hold up the T-shirt too late because uh, it's the wrong country. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, and you blame me. <laughs> the bare feet at the time. In fact, and uh, you find the week in your bare feet, wonders would happen. <laughs> you get what you want said, actually. You'll go ahead anyway. Now, this was confession of the Marine. And that's how the Joel Quinn And he died suddenly, and I hope it's not something she said to him. <laughs> Now this is the textile factor. There was a great about it for Westport to get there. It employed a lot of men for a long, long time. The Corpy family ran it and ran very well. And it, they still own part of that property and did learn still a part of the property. I think that was my eating there then. And that's an interior shot of it, it's like just an interior shot. Okay, Tom. And the Lord, that was a shop I loved. It's a green shop. And inside, of course, a lovely old traditional shop with the things hanging in cookbooks on the ceiling and all those things. It was lovely. There was a lovely atmosphere. And the guy, Johnny Malai, was such a lovely man to go into. And he loved his shop, too. And it was lovely to see those things in the street. Now, that was the entrance into um, the Crescent now that's in Westport. And there was lovely, it, it was a gatehouse there, which the Joyce's are living in now. It was a gatehouse, a lovely pillars and wrought iron gates and everything. And it was lovely to see them coming down. Uh, just to make room into the, the Crescent, and it's a hotel where we are. But the, thankfully there are lovely stone pillars put up again down in Church Lane, which was the, really the old original entrance into Westport House, and Mount Iron Gates too. So that's that, which is better than that way now. Yeah. Now this was Westport when it was a two-way traffic. You could walk into the garden, and I'm going to go over here so. <laughs> This is true, and you have delivery guards and cars going everywhere. And there was a great guard guard in the garden, and he was half a big great man to keep the traffic moving. And uh, when they saw him coming, you'd see housewives running out of shops. <laughs> the cars, right? But the, the, there was a petition put on by the traders, and the, I was in business on the street myself, and to go along and object to the being changed to a uh, one way. And uh, because I said the customers wouldn't be able to uh, park outside the shops or something. But uh, I wouldn't sign the phone. And it was the right thing. You imagine it now if, if, if that hadn't come through. If it was still two ways, it should nothing would happen. I don't know why Now, this is a nice story. So, this is Jack McKean, a lovely gentleman that ran his pub there and his grocery and all these supplies for the farmers. And they come there for their house supplies for the horses and for the, for the horses and carts and uh, for cattle feed and everything like that. 
and sits his instrument. And inside to the left was the pub, and inside to the right was a lovely grocery shop. So we go inside now and have a look at them. Now there is a third of mine. Now there's something about, to see that sink there. Now that sink is a copper beam, beautifully shaped, with copper, shining copper, spotless. And they came in from the head to the and said, that sink must go, it has to be stained with steel. No, it was awful, and Dan couldn't take it in, was furious. And then they came in again with Canon and uh, into the, uh, his grocery shop. And it was lovely, it's just, uh, take the shop, take that for a lovely. Yeah, it was lovely. Now, I know it's happening, you don't mind any hard balances. So, you know, that's like there's something lovely and lovely about it. But, yeah, you, you have a great shop too. Because <laughs> 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 there's Dan McGee now behind me, you see? And he was told, he was told, you can't have this. This has to go. So has this to go. You can't have the person in the And he, he was so upset, he said, that's it. Just closed up, put up for sale. And he was there now with uh, Matt Malloy, which was very successful at the pub now. But that was brought down again. He, he was fed up at that stage of life. He told he couldn't do this. And nobody ever died from it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now this was Gibbons' part, and that was run by John Gibbons Jr., whose grandfather had that business there in Melbourne and Shaw Street. And John was the first person to, and I try to remember to put music and entertainment and food into the pub on this street. And he was the first pub to do that. And then um, and he then he would find an academic career. So now uh, this was John Wax's John John Houston's bike from uh, from uh, and he was part. I know you see him in that. And you know they <laughs> they kinda of order lunch now that. Uh, so they were here with the baggage on the side and uh, the three three you know the stormy archer beers, three threes, yeah. I think that's a classic. <laughs> Couldn't resist it. And, uh, okay. Right now, this, this is uh, the morn from the, from the key, and it's the last half door house in Westbrook. The very last. So, no other half door must put out to that, but to see uh, the house was totally remodeled. I remember a cover here myself that most of the houses were in half. Uh, it's very empty here. Yeah. Good, very empty. Um, this is Pongo Kelly. And this was a pre harsh parade. He used to have a parade around the town advertised to come in <coughs> off the Westbrook House grounds. And there's the famous Pongo, great character for us. And can I honor them? Now, there's Pongo, two grandchildren, two grandchildren. And there's Mrs. Egan. And there's Mary Angela. Go on, the ladies go around and make sure themselves around the town. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you might wonder why I have this up there. It just shows you uh, what you can see in the picture, too. This was simple marketing. In a hotel, Westbrook, A grade, turn left the Church of Art. And this was advertising. And the next one's Grand Certain Hotel and the Half Central Heating. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next one is the Traveler's French, the Half Central Heating and Entertainment. <laughs> Now we're coming on. Now the next one went for me. They have oil fire to do. Now we're getting crazy. <laughs> but the difference now, when you think of that, think of that at simple times. Now there are professionally trained marketing people with good jobs in the hotels, professionally marketing the hotel. And it pays. Just shows that the crowds now that fills out of one of the hotels because they're people who are professionally trained to market their products. Now, these, I saw this was attached. I think it's not quite attached, but I think it was attached. Now, these, these ads are illegal. Now, those type of, those ones were, were really great because they were made of steel and they were great when the big snows, as Travolta, they were holding them. They were jumping. The, the field behind our house, Brennan's field, 
was famous for it in the Miss Norm 47. <laughs> but the Craven A's too, they were very expensive cigarettes. And the old, you heard the wise guys say, Craven and Sunday and Craven Bucks on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is Wayne's shop. I think there was a bar three years ago. I think it's a really work. But they're not very legal anymore, too. There are good reasons to, I'm sure, for watching the rest of the people. So that's Wayne's.